Here we are doing the setup of the LCD projector and the smart board. And uh, Ellen, would I be able to board your laptop for part of this? All right, awesome, thank you. Uh, you can just leave it right there for now. Uh, there are three different connections that we need to make, and there are three different components. Okay, so the components you need for making this work are the smart board, there's the LCD projector, and your computer. Okay, if you've got those three, we're well on our way. Okay. Then there are three main connections that you need to make as well. Okay. There's a connection of the computer to the LCD projector, so we have a signal that's otherwise on your screen showing up here. We need to plug in the computer and the LCD projector to power, and then we also need to hook up the LCD projector to, sorry, the computer to the smart board, okay, so that the input you do here is registering on the computer. Okay, so step one, we're going to make sure everything is plugged into power, okay? So the computer right now, as we follow it, is plugged in, and on the LCD projector, I could follow the cord and make sure it's plugged in, but on top of the LCD projector, right next to the power button on almost every LCD projector, there is a little orange dot. That's, and that just tells you that there's power getting to here, but it's not turned on right now. Okay. The three options are orange saying it's on standby, green means it's on, red means oh dear, probably means the lamp has overheated or something like that. If it's red, you should not turn it on. Now leave it plugged in because the fan may come on or may not, but don't try to use it until the red light goes out. Okay? So this setup is on a cart, and that's how it's often done in a school setting. Um, typically, we've got a larger smart board that we're working with instead of the small one. But what I find is it really depends on the projector. Okay, The projectors that we use in our board, it's about seven feet between the front of the LCD projector and the board. Okay, So I'm going to move this so it's about seven feet away. I'm not going to in this case because we're looking at a smaller board. Okay. And we want to make sure the front of the LCD projector, first of all, that the lens is pointed pretty much at the middle of the smart board, and also that the front of the LCD projector is parallel with the smart board. Okay, we'll look at why that's important in a few minutes. The first connection we want to make after making sure they're both plugged in is plugging in the LCD projector to the laptop. Okay? Thank you. And not dropping everything on the floor. So if we look at our laptop and LCD projector connection, you'll see on the LCD projector itself, we've got some options of where we can plug things into. Okay. In this case, I would actually disagree with how this was set up. This is for the document camera that we'll talk about tomorrow. I may not finish this. We'll uh, ignore it and just move to the other. You'll notice that with the document camera, the end of these is black. It's the same kind of thing as the blue one. Most LCD projectors come with a blue end to it. It's just a nice way to keep it straight. You'll also notice at the back of the LCD projector, the receptacles where the VGA go into are also blue. It's color-coded on purpose. Okay. So, in this case, there are two different places where you can put something into the back of the LCD projector to get signal to it, okay? There's computer one and computer two. doesn't matter which one. I'm going to take the other end of that, and the connector looks identical on both ends, and it's going to go into the back of the laptop. Generally speaking, in every case that I'm aware of, the LCD to the, the connector that we need to use is either back left corner or left side near the back that you're going to want to, to plug it into. This may look blue, again for color coding, but I find most laptops instead, uh, it's black. Okay, So you'll plug that in. Most of them you're able to screw it in uh, using the, the screws. I usually don't bother. Okay. So we'll put the laptop back for now. So we've connected the laptop to the LCD projector. I'm going to turn this on now. This one has a little slider, so we can open that.
and I'm just going to touch the power button gently and it will flash green while it warms up. You'll see a little splash that the manufacturer puts on there as it warms up. And then if we're lucky, this is what will happen. We'll start to get the view of what's on our screen show up on the, uh, on the, the screen ourselves. So, again, want to make sure that this is parallel to this that the lens is pretty much pointed at the middle of the screen instead of off to the side. If it's off to the side, this is what ends up happening. Okay? That's why it's important to be pointed at the middle and in the middle. Okay? Now what we want to do is we want to make sure as much of the screen is filled up as possible. Okay? So we will either, in this case we want to make it bigger, we can either move the entire cart backward until it's about the right size, or on the top of most of the LCD projectors that are out there, uh, there are one or two little levers here. Usually the front lever is for focus, the one closest to the front is for focus. So again, if we're looking at this, we've got options. The second one, it says W and T. Think of your digital camera. W is for wide angle, the T is for telephoto, although the easy way to remember it is W for wide, T for tiny. Okay, And some of them, when you do W to T, it's a huge difference. In this case, it's not so much. So we'll our LCD projector, point it in the middle, and then we'll W and T and move it around. What we're trying to do is fill up as much of the screen as possible without going over like I have up here. Okay, so I'm going to adjust to make sure that I've got it centered and, uh, and filling the screen as much as possible. Okay. And you'll notice that uh, I'm kind of going out a little bit over here. That probably means that I need to shift it a little bit that way. Okay, I'm missing some space at the bottom. These projectors have, and most projectors have three feet on the bottom of them. They either have two in the back and one in the front, or two in the front and one in the back. Either the two back or the two front, or the one front or the one back is adjustable uh, for height. Usually it's the front ones. And you can either screw it in, righty tighty, lefty loosey, or out in order to get the right height that you're looking for. Or there's a little lever in front. If you pull that up, then you, that's your quick adjust. Now, when I format, so I like to have it so that it's set up pretty much at the bottom of the screen, and it gives me flexibility for the rest of it. There we go. That's not bad. Right. Now, one thing you need to know. Sometimes you will connect this, and you're only going to end up with a blue screen here. You're not going to see what you see on the laptop. Okay? What happens is, there's a switch inside the computer that says, hey, send the video signal either just to here, or to here and here, or just to here. Okay? On every laptop that I've seen, anyway. There is, usually they're blue, in this case they're not. There's an, an FN, or a function key, right here. And when they're blue in particular, you'll notice that scattered around the function keys and over here and over here, there are little blue things all over your keyboard, okay? And what that means is that function key will do stuff if you hold down function and touch those keys. So either the F3, F4, F5, F7, or F8 key, you will either have something that says LCD slash CRT, meaning that it's an external monitor, like an LCD monitor or a CRT monitor, or it will have something that looks like this. A line, sort of a circle, but kind of with, not really a circle, and then another line, okay? Sort of like a 1 and a 0 and a 1. And that's to indicate that it's monitor out. So if you hold down, are you not seeing it? Yours is probably F3 or F4. LCD slash CRT. Uh, F4. F5. 
Uh, no, it's not. Uh, F5 is, uh, is hibernate. It's to put to sleep. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to demonstrate what it looks like behind it. I'm going to hold down function. I'm going to touch, in this case, F4. Okay? And it's going to switch. So take some moment, so don't get don't get excited and I gotta do it again. I gotta do it again. In this case, the monitor here is blank. It's sending the signal only to the LCD projector. There are three different settings. The last one was both. This one is LCD projector only. And if I do function F4 again, that will shut off and it will only show up here. So if you don't like the configuration, if you want to be able to see it here, just hit function F4 or function F3 or whatever until you get the configuration that you want. But be patient. It can take up to about 10 seconds for it to actually show up. Okay, so function F4, and we should have both in a moment. Okay. Sure. Can I get to you in a moment? Okay, there's one more thing that I'd like to do to, uh, to finish the setup. There's a one hookup and then one extra thing that we need to do. The third hookup, so the first was to power, second was computer to LCD. The third hookup is the smart board to your laptop. Okay? This is actually it's just a printer cable. Okay? On the one end, it looks like a regular USB connector, like on the thumb drive that you have. On the other end, it's either a house, flat sides, flat bottom, first top, or it's a capital letter D. Okay. There's only one way that both ends can go in. The capital letter D goes into the capital letter D over here. And then this goes into any USB connector on your laptop. It should be. Over here. Okay. Now, when that happens, you may have noticed it. This turns red for a moment. Lights flash across here twice, going there, 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 and there, and then again. And then that should turn green. Often you'll get a little message saying it's connected, it's working. Okay? If you don't get that, that means one of two things. Either the connection is imperfect, you might want to try tightening this uh, to both ends, trying a different USB port. You also might want to try checking to make sure you've got the software properly installed. Those are the two typical things. If that doesn't work at all, um, sometimes this will turn red, which indicates that you don't have the software at all. It's getting power, it just doesn't know what to do. Sometimes this flash is green, that means that it understands some of what's going on, but you've got limited usefulness. It happens most often with your Mac and PC. Okay? So now, when I touch this, it knows that whenever I touch this, the mouse is being controlled by what I do on here. Okay, there's one last thing you need to do in order to complete this and make this usable, and that is to teach the computer that when I touch here, I mean here and not over there or where I am. Let me go to a new page. So, for example, I pick up the pen. It's pretty accurate, but it's not perfect. Okay. So we need to teach the computer to understand where I'm touching. To do that, we need to orient. And that's the easy way is these two buttons in the front here. One looks like a keyboard, one looks like a mouse. If I touch both of them at the same time really quickly, I'll get the orientation straight. And then it says press center of target and release. I can use my finger, but this is much finer point, and you're going to get more accurate results if you use that. So I can just touch that and move on. Or, to be a little bit more accurate, it's where you let go that matters. Well, wherever. I mean, I guess. And if I mess up, if I'm wildly off, if I made a mistake on this one, it says to go back, press the left arrow key just on the keyboard, and it'll kick back. 
But if I screw this up, no, 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 what I do is I have AI audio. This is really accurate. Then I can load it into the garage that I can have the present. This is not. Down here is way off. Right? Because this is the part of that I messed up. Okay? If I was to say,